Chair, uh, as you are aware, I have two issues to raise before these uh, honorable committees. I uh, will uh, make my presentation in two folds. One, as uh, uh, chair, a uh, few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, I was arrested in my Kitengela home with uh, almost uh, 15 DCI officers and uh, they ambushed my house in the wee hours of the night and um, uh, I'm sure you all know that narrative but what disturbs me chair is that uh, immediately I was uh, mishandled and taken to Mumia's police station no charges were put on me I was taken to Mumias. I was never taken to a cell. I stayed outside, uh, uh, outside uh, uh, the OCS office. In fact, uh, I even slept in my car. Nobody was willing to book me in. The OCPD and the OCS of Mumias police station refused to, uh, to book me in because the officers who had uh, taken me to Mumias when they wanted to hand me over to the officers uh, uh, in Mumias police station, the officers refused to uh, uh, take over from the Nairobi officers. So I was left hanging there for like um, six hours until morning. And up to today, I've never been called to record any statement. I've never been told why I was arrested. And uh, that morning, the DPP came and said that uh, I do not have any charges preferred upon me, and therefore I should, I'm a free man. So I just wanted to know, uh, uh, and this honorable uh, committee to help me know what was the mistake I committed and why did they arrest me? Uh, in full glare of the cameras, people knew that I was a criminal, yet I'm a honorable member, a law-abiding citizen. I would like to know why they, have, uh, they, they, they did that to me, Chair. But most importantly, Chair, on the second uh, issue, and that is what my focal attention will be on, uh, Chair, I received information, very reliable information, that uh, we had uh, a group of five DCI officers who had been formed to keep an eye on me. And uh, I will be very frank with this committee. I will name the officers because I have the names of the officers. One is uh, Sergeant Kiprop, Elias Rop. The second one is Sergeant Benedict B, Elias Arap B. The third one is Abanas Chemitei. The fourth one is David Kuteha Ingutia. And the fifth one is Silvanos Njeru, who was the driver. Mr. Speaker, these officers first met at the DCI executive launch where they were given instructions to, uh, uh, to form a team, but they were not given details at that point. The person who was trying to mobilize them called for another meeting the following day at Hotel Lamada of Thikarod. When the five officers went to Hotel Lamada, they were entertained with drinks and food. But they were not told anything. They were just told there is an assignment that he wants you to partake and we shall give you details. Go home, we shall communicate. So when the officers went back home, they were like, they, 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 they were wondering why they, they were being mobilized and what assignment was that. Mr. Speaker, the officers thereafter were called into another meeting in Thika Town at Eton Hotel in Thika Town. When they arrived at Eton Hotel, they were told to leave their phones at the reception. 
All of them left their phones at the reception and they were given receipts to identify their phones when they will come and pick them back, Mr. Speaker. When they got into that meeting, Eton, Eton Hotel, Eton Hotel in Thika Town. Yes, Thika Town. When they arrived in that just, meeting... Just a clarification, Chair. Uh, executive launch. Which executive launch is this? DCI headquarters executive launch. At the DCI headquarters, we have an executive launch. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when they got into that meeting at Eton Hotel in Thika Town, they met a police chief inspector in the name Wanzala. Wanzala was now the commander of the crew who had come to brief them on the assignment that they were supposed to partake, Mr. Speaker. And Wanzala was very categorical that we are giving you an assignment to keep an eye on Senator Cleophas Malala and we shall give you subsequent commands thereafter. Chair, the five officers were assigned a motor vehicle, Subaru Forester, green in color, and uh, the number plate of the Subaru Forester was KBZ 537Y. Though that was a pseudo number plate, the real number plate of that vehicle was a GKB862H. Uh, Mr. Chair, the five member, I call it assassin group. Mr. S uh, Mr. Chair, they gave themselves a code name. That code name was Bravo Zulu Yankee. Bravo Zulu Yankee. And that name emanated from the number plates KBZ537Y. B, Bravo, Z, Zulu, and the last Y, Yankee. That was the code name, so that uh, nobody can identify them. Mr. Chair, this squad of police assassins were given a total patrol fueling card that they will use during their operation. Mr. Speaker, furthermore, my sources informed me that the following officers had their regular Seska pistol recalled. All their Seska pistols were recalled. And these officers, Benedict B, Elias Arap B, Abanas Chemutai, were given a semi-automatic lethal rifle known as Scorpion, which, according to my research, Mr. Chair, is manufactured in Israel and Yugoslavia. The Scorpion, just to give details to this honorable committee, is a high-caliber semi-automatic rifle with 20 rounds of ammunition, as opposed to the Seska pistol with 15 rounds. It is no secret that the Scorpion gun is a weapon of choice for hired assassins and other rogues as it has the following obvious and known advantages. And it's good to tell this committee. One, the Scorpion rifle can be broken into pieces which can be easily assembled. It's a big one, but it can be broken into small pieces. Can be discreetly be carried around. Carries larger magazines of 20 rounds of ammunition. Can shoot with accuracy 
from 800 meters as compared to 200 meters for a Seska pistol. Capacity to function with attached silencer. It has a capacity to function with an attached silencer. That means they can shoot you from 800 meters with a silencer. Comes with a shooting lens for accuracy of hitting a target. We are fully informed that the following officers and members of the crack assassination squad assigned to eliminate me were given Seska pistols. That is David Kuteha, Sergeant Kiprop, and Sylvanas Njeru. The two, the, the Chebi, the Benedict B and Abanas Chemutai were given the Scorpion pistol. So they had five, I mean, uh, five uh, rifles. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, it is clear that uh, these, uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, officers were given uh, money as pocket money. I think it is a, uh, it's not the practice of the police to be given cash. But in this instance, they were given money just to walk around with money and just to be comfortable. And they were told not to report to work until they finish their assignment. Mr. Speaker, once I raised these issues and I wrote a letter to the Inspector General, copied it to the, I, uh, to the Cabinet Secretary of Interior, to the Attorney General, to the Sergeant at Arms, the Clerk, the OCS Kakamega Police Station, OCS Kitengela, OCS Parliament Building, and the Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, the day I raised these issues, all those officers were summoned to the DCI and given a two weeks compulsory leave with 20,000 each. They were told, go home, don't come to work, don't pick anyone's call, we are giving you 20,000 transport allowance leave. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, we know that transport allowance leave uh, money is given through pay slips. But this time round, they were given in cash and told to go home. Some of those officers, three of them, after they were given those, uh, uh, the, the allowances, Mr. Speaker, traveled to Kakamega Town. And they were hoovering around Kakamega Town, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, we have what we call the Arms Movement Book. Register. Register. Mr. Speaker, the said Arms Movement Register was withdrawn immediately I raised these issues. We want to know why that Arms Movement Register was withdrawn. The DCI Arms Movement Register, where the officers signed to have uh, taken the Scorpion and the uh, other pistols, Mr. Speaker. The register was withdrawn, and uh, up to now, it has not been returned. They are using a new register. Mr. Speaker, the vehicle that was assigned to keep an eye has now been taken to Limuru DCI, and the number plate has been changed to a Southern Sudan number plate. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, these are life-threatening incidents. I'm a father, a young father, a husband, and a representative of the people of Kakamega. It is very disheartening for officers or for people to sit in a corner to think that they can take away my life. I would like to take this opportunity, Chair, to humbly request this committee and the Inspector General to take note that my, I have said this time and again that my life is in danger. I have written enough letters. I have called offices in this republic. They have not taken any action 
even to give me extra security. I've gone to the Kakamega County Commissioner begging for security, Mr. Chair. Nobody is willing to give me security, Mr. Chair. It is sad for me to walk around the streets of Kakamega and Kenya knowing that I'm going to die the following day, Mr. Chair. And the most painful thing, Mr. Chair, I see respectable leaders of this republic saying that I forged my arrest, Mr. S Mr. Chair. After all this, somebody says that I planned with the police to forge, that I stage managed my arrest, surely. That I even sent the police a PIN number. Mr. Chair, I carry a heavy heart with me.